Yeah. All right, let's get started. <laughs> so last workshop, I see you all from City University of New York. She is a bioinformatics scientist there and she will present her workshop on genomic super signal. So see you and please take it away. Okay. Hey, uh, thank you for the introduction. Uh, welcome to my package demo session. I know it's hard to be at the last one, but thanks. And so today I will introduce my new package, Genomic Super Signature, which is designed for transfer learning and efficient database search. So before I start, I just want to thank Levi and Sean, who are awesome mentors and collaborators from the very beginning of this project, and Kuni for a friendly and supportive environment, and our funder. So can you see my cursor? Moving? Uh, maybe not. Okay. Oh, good. <clears throat> okay, so I will start. So this is a overview of today's uh, talk. So I will start with the general introduction and go through more detail on what genomic super signature is and what kinds of analysis it can do and finish with a quick live demo. So we were motivated to make genomic super signature because too often new gene expression data is analyzed by itself, even though there are large public database on previous studies. So there have been attempts to use, uh, use the existing database, but some are limited because they are often hard to use, like require extensive bioinformatics knowledge, or requires heavy computing in case where when you need to train your own model or work only in a specific data type, such as like immune cell omni or single cell omni and so on. So we aim to improve these shortcomings of existing methods. So we propose a new method with two main components. So first uh, is pre-trained model named RAP model, which is trained on large heterogeneous public data sets and our package named the genomic super signature for easy application of the model on new data. So our method is robust to batch effects, so applicable across, across platform and different underlying biology, which I will show in the use cases later. Okay. So overall, genomic super signature is designed to interpret gene expression profile by comparison to published data for the current version of the model data archived in SRA and by connecting them to the relevant literature, mesh terms, and gene sets. The potential application of our method could be like finding similar studies and data sets to your own gene expression data or find pathways associated with your sample or data sets in a form of labeling principal components or comparable analysis across data sets from different platforms, such as expression profiles from microarray and RNA-seq. Or using the continuous scores assigned by our model, we can do digit subtyping at the higher resolution. Through the transfer learning capacity of our method, we, uh, we expect that we can identify or infer weak or missing signals as well. And the core value of genomic super signature is data reuse and interoperability. And this diagram is kind of summarizing that concept. And we are focusing on making it easy to analyze new data in the context of the existing database with minimal computational resource and bioinformatics training. So uh, explore, explore EDA process can be more general bioinformatics, uh, general workflow part of like regular lab even bad lab work, potentially. That's our ultimate goal. So you can check uh, if you want to, like I will try to describe as much as I can within the time limit, but if you want to check more detail on the algorithm of genomic super signature, you can find it in our recent publication. So let me explain a little more about what genomic super signature is. So this diagram sh uh, shows the whole pro process of a uh, RAB model building. So RAB represents replicable axis of variation. 
So the, uh, so the top part is a web model building process, and the bottom part is its application on new data using genomic super signature package. So the current version of RAM model is trained on about 45,000 RNA-seq data set from uh, RNA-seq samples from 536 studies obtained from SRA. We did the PCA and gene uh, and on the gene expression profiles and clustered the top pieces to build RAVs. The collection of RAVs named RAV index are further annotated with match terms and gene sets. And the collection of uh, and RAV index and annotations and metadata associated with the originating studies all together are provided as a RAV model to the user. So this RAV this RAV model is a RAV model is a pre-trained model, and once user bring their own data. Genomic super signature assigns quantitative value to the input data and connects it to the existing databases and suggests interpretation shown in this blue box. So it uh, offers the associated studies and then quanti quantify phenotype and like uh, mesh terms and then enrich gene sets as a uh, uh, link to your own input data. So. RAV, I briefly mentioned, but RAV construction process can be summarized in three steps. So first, we collect the top pieces, the top principal components of the training data set, and cluster those principal components uh, pieces based on uh, using the hierarchical clustering using experiment correlation. And then average uh, those pieces in the, each, each cluster, and that average loading is named uh, rev. So he, here in this example, this is one example of rev two to one, and this rev two to one is built from PC two of the study ERP zero one six seven nine n eight PC nine of this study PC three of this study. So this is like how rev is constructed, and the variance explained by these pieces are used later to weight the contribution of each study during RAV annotation. So I will explain a little more on that next slide. And RAV can be compared to principal components of new data set, which we call validation process. And I will explain that also in a few slides as well. Okay, so, so I mentioned that I said, uh, mentioned the RAV index is annotated. And then for the current mo model, it's annotated with both mesh terms and gene sets. So for mesh term annotation, first we collect all the mesh terms assigned to the studies used to build RAV index. And each term is reverse weighted by the frequency. That means that if term, a certain mesh term is show up more frequently in the training data set, they are penalized. In the that's why the, the reason we did is because we want to find something specific to the data set. So they and then they are further weighted by the variance explained by PC I mentioned the previous slide. And finally we added additional like, additional modification on available so certain mesh terms can be filtered out with the customizable drop list. So at the end, the revs are annotated with mesh terms specific to the given rev. So for gene set annotation, we use the pre-ranked gene list from each rev, so uh, based on their uh, the average loadings, and each pathways with the minimum Q value are stored in rev model, and they're ranked they are ranked by normalized enriched scores. So these two are the main annotation of REVs. And so REV model is a collection of REV index and then its annotations, so mesh term and then the gene sets and the metadata associated with the training data sets themselves. So REV model inherits summarized experimental object and the REV index, which is a gene by REVs matrix, is stored in the assay slot. And information on the training data sets is stored in the column data and training data slots. 
So this is how RAB model looks like. So for example, the current RAB model has like almost 14,000 gene and then 4764 RABs in it. And the metadata that's associated with the RAB model building process. So like what version is it? How many cluster, each cluster size? The gene set used to annotate and so on. RAB indexes in the essay slot and then Let's see, column data has the uh, gene set, enriched gene set, and then training data information is also stored he here in the training data set slot. So this is rapid. And so this diagram is explaining how the validation process works. So input from users, so here colored in gray, is gene by samples matrix. So genomic super signature calculate the Pearson correlation between top eight pieces. So here, pieces of the input data and REVs. And we named uh, this process, uh, this correlation coefficient as, vali uh, as validation score. The validation score represent the relevance between REV and new data. So all this process colored in green here from the PCA of the input data till the validation process are done by the package. So users just need to plug in the their gene by samples metrics and then the package will handle the rest. And the uh, package further provide the functionality is to extract information associ associated with the validated web, such as literature, raw data, gene sets, and match terms, and so on. Okay, this is uh, here, I just summarized the key terms. So, and I explained the RAV, RAV index, RAV model, validation score, and the sample score, I didn't go through that much, but it is uh, actually my matrix multiplication result between the input data and RAV index. So that uh, validation is input data's top PC and the RAV, and the score, sample score is just input data and the RAV. And then this, I will show how this sample score can be used to use for transfer learning in the benchmarking example later. So this is, oh, I'm in pretty good time. So, uh, so this is a genre, as a background. I think it should be fair enough to understand this like next section of like example use cases and a couple of benchmarking example. Uh, the benchmarking example will be on digit subtyping and transfer learning through REVs. So, so this first example show that is example is applying RAB model on TCJ datasets for database search. So Penner, uh, so first step is to find the RAB that's relevant to your study, the, to your data set. So the most straightforward way is using validate function. So panel A and B here are both from valid, uh, validation function. So this, uh, and then uh, valid, uh, these are validation wizard and then displayed in a heat map style, which is part of the functionality as well. And each column represent each uh, different specific wraps. And in panel A, we apply wrap model on five different cancer types. And you see that the RAB221 shows the strong and very specific validation score for breast cancer. So I did uh, this validation only on the breast cancer GAN, which is the panel B. And then panel B is the, so validation, uh, is the validation result of breast cancer omni, where the top panel is showing the average silhouette width of the RAB, which could be used as a guide to identify the right RAB for your data set, but I will not focus that much on today, that there are more deeper use usage instruction. But so, so from validation process, we it seemed like RAP221 is the right RAP to analyze breast, TCJ breast cancer's data set. So once you identify the RAP of your interest, you can instantly print out associated mesh terms in a word cloud, which is shown here in the panel C, and the relevant studies in panel D, and enriched pathways in the panel E. So, here we see that mesh, mesh, term, mesh cloud shows the brass as one of the most representative term. And then three relevant studies are 
or on breast cancer, and the top enriched pathways are or breast cancer associated. And these, uh, I will do this in the like I will reproduce this figure in the live demo, but and show how quickly we can do this. And uh, next, uh, the other use case uh, is uh, interpret PCA results. So for this example, we I use the immune subset data, EM tab two four five two. So this is the immune data set, and genomic super signature can extract the enriched gene sets of the Rev. Here, Rev that shows the highest validation score for the input data as principal component. So we currently. Uh, require at least eight samples for this validation process. And then this annotate PC function is identify the rev that's most highly closely related uh, linked to the top eight rev. So PC1 is linked to, uh, for example, here, PC1 is rev 23, PC2, rev 1552, PC3, and rev 1387, and then extract the enriched, enriched pathway linked to those REVs. So, so, and we can uh, extract the enriched pathway for one PC, or we can extract multiple PC, uh, enriched pathway from of the multiple PCs as well. And then the, I think one of the cool part is you can just, uh, you can draw a PCA plot along with the enriched pathways in the table. So this, uh, just remember we will, I will show how to reproduce fig this figure in the live demo session as well. And so RAPS uh, represents biological features. So, so we can use genomic super signature beyond the database search itself, the search. So in the next two slides, I will show benchmarking example on disease subtyping and transfer learning. Both are kind of using, taking advantage of like REV representing a certain a specific biological feature. So in this first example here, we benchmark the REV model against a disease specific model and apply the both models on the same test disease data set, which is used uh, the same data set, uh, same disease used for disease specific model. So in other words, I will make, uh, so the disease spe specific model was trained on the colon cancer data set and tested on colon cancer, cancer data sets. But RAB model was uh, trained on the heterogeneous data sets and tested on the colon cancer data set. So the other thing you need to know, uh, 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 remember is there the training data sets are quite different. So uh, from the uh, training data sets are from the different platforms. So disease specific model is using the microarray data set and majority of test data sets are microarray data set and genomic super signature is training data set is from RNAC and then only one of the one out of 10 test data set was the RNA seq data set. And then uh, we, uh, we compare their performance on separating discrete subtypes labeled here with the different colors. And the result you can see, even though the training data sets were completely different, both platform-wise and like underlying biology-wise, our model shows comparable performance to the disease-specific model. And because RAB model was trained on heterogeneous data set, we expect that it has uh, it can be used for other digits subtyping, meaning there is RAB that represents a uh, biological feature to subtyping other other disease, not just colon cancer. So we think uh, RAB uh, RAB model and genomic super signature can be more versatile. And the second example, benchmarking example, is a transfer learning. So these two scatter plots are from two independent data set. So first, using the using the available metadata, which is a neutrophil count of data set one, we identify the rab fifteen fifty one as the one that's explaining this metadata, which is neutrophil count feature, and we apply this rab to the data set 
two, which is completely unrelated, uh, unrelated to data set one, and then use the apply this rev on uh, rev on data set two to infer the neutrophil count. And because there is no neutrophil metadata from data set two, we use like other tool to estimate the neutrophil count of data set two and then compare uh, and compare that, that to the rev assigned score. So this here, the the score we are using plotted on the x-axis of the x-axis is the sample score I mentioned in the summary terms table. So we confirm that the like rev 1551 can explain the same phenotypes, the neutrophil count at a uh, neutrophil count phenotype of data set two. So this means one rev can explain a specific uh, phenotype across two distinct data set. So this use case suggests that genomic super signature can be used to infer missing data or identify weak and underrepresented biological signatures using the existing studies. So this is, okay, I am going very fast. So in conclusion, so genomic super signature uh, demonstrate very efficient and coherent database search and robustness to a batch effects and transfer learning capacity. And we think the major improvement relative to the existing approaches are first very increased usability through pre-computed model and package and uh, versatility by not being limited to any specific biology and applicable across different platforms. And the modularity, which I hear here, I mean like annotation is separated from model building and scalability. That's uh, I'm trying to uh, I mean like fast training procedure. Those those last two fact two parts are not directly linked to the users, but the these two feature together make it very easy to expand the RAP model. So it can be. It can affect the user at the end like, by providing more different uh, uh, models, collection of models. So that's actually kind of like linked to our future direction because one of the main future plan is expanding RAP model to the different training data sets, such as single cell data, like different species and microbiome, and potentially develop a tool to cross talk between RAP models. So kind of my dream world is you plug in, for example, my data set and then can learn from like, learn relate uh, learn from like relevant like human study and C elegant study and so on, like without much difficulty or learning a lot of like bioinformatics tools or having like huge computer resources in your hand. And we also plan to add more annotations like different gene sets and additional metadata of originating studies. So that part is related to modularity of the model building process that we can just expand in a more different dimension. And so at uh, last, uh, more information is available from our paper uh, package and use case site listed here. I think I put the, all the information and link in the, uh, in the bio, the, what is the WebEx site? I think it, you can access that. And then I will do the quick demo. So, just like for the like, uh, for input preparation, just there are like a few simple requirements. So first, like gene expression profile from both microarray and RNA seq can be used as an input. So it become clear based on the our use case example earlier, and it can be provided as an uh, as an object containing gene by sample metrics. So it's in, uh, including expression sets, summarized experiment, or just simple metrics. And the, this tool performs the best when the input follows a normal distribution. So that's like a little bit of pre-processing we, we are asking. And the gene should be denoted by gene symbol. And I mentioned in the at the beginning, but for data set level validation, uh, we ask to have, uh, have your input at least eight samples. And uh, this... Uh, already run the, the vignette is here you can check and I will go to the picture oh 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 I think I did something wrong okay 
I will share again. Yeah, I'm looking at other screen now. So can you see my screen right now? Yes, we can. Okay. So this uh, vignette is actually I, so you go workshop info there and then when go to my workshop section and the source part is I have the link paper, bioconductor packet side or the use cases, use case size. So which this page include everything or the code and then code to reproduce figures in the paper and oops and workshop vignette that i'm gonna run right now and workshop slide is over uh over there as well so let's go through this so i have a uh i just plug in new dimensionality reduction uh, function in the so you can now the tool can handle the single cell. So I will, if you want to try single cell, I will you I will recommend to use the GitHub version of the package. But for now, see you. Can you please make it full screen and maybe larger? Oh, form? oh, this is okay. Sorry about that. Uh, let's see, full screen and then make it. How's it now? Great, great. Thank okay. you. So, so the right now the there are two there are two RAP models available. They are stored in stored in Google Cloud Bucket, and then I provide the you can download directly using wget. But I put the get model function within genomic super signature, and then this is the not request or pay, so there is no charge on that. So you just you can just run this. So I just put uh. I try to check how long it takes. It usually takes a few seconds. Each model is a little less than 500 megabytes, but you can download very quickly. And so your model is there right now, RAP model. And then RAP model here is on, uh, annotated with GeneSets. Oh, let's see what GeneSets. So. So the RAB model is annotated with the three priors from plier package. So this is mostly about the blood uh, uh, blood cell, blood related uh, gene sets. And the RAB model C2 is MCDB C2 version 7.1. That's what how what these models are annotated. So except annotation, the gene set annotation part, the other part is identical. So I decide to use for the, uh, so this is, decide to use uh, B-cell Viper, some, uh, so this uh, data for the database searching example. So I just loaded this sample data, and then this is the validation function. So validation, there is other option you can adjust, but it's pretty much fine, like you don't, most of cases you don't really need to worry about it and so validate and then the imp so you uh, so validate you put the, your input data set and wrap model and that take about less than a second and then you do just uh do we have the heat map table function so if we uh, visualize the validation result in the heat map format so that's that's you can how you can extract the uh find identity this is a process of identifying relative uh, relevant rep and then so this one i just this is the other function that you can collect just the index of the top validated reps and i Actually, I can just run this, but I run this. So at the beginning, a little bit of you need to put a little bit of effort to find the rab that's representing your study. So I did uh, like I how I did is I did uh, check the match term word cloud, and then I think the fifth validation validated index, which is a uh, uh, rab uh, 1139, is the one representing. 
I will just do this. Representing the input data set most best. So based on like, yeah, lymph lymphocyte T cell and then like C28 antigen, all these like kind of represented this rep is like the more relevant to the input data set. And once you get that, once you identify the target rep, you can now subset enriched pathways using the subset enriched pathways function and then put rep model and then index you want to check and then find the studies in this cluster. So find the studies that's relevant to this rep. So find studies in cluster, you put rep model and index. If you don't put study title, uh, don't ask study title by default, it just give the study name and then what PC is coming, uh, coming from that study and then variance explained by that PC. But if you put study title, it gives actually what study is involved. And then you can see here it's pretty much rep, uh, very uh, uh, well, uh, explain the input data. So I think the this is different from just a blasting PubMed or other database search is because it's we are now just how you extract this information is purely just using your data. So just expression data itself is direct use. So I think this minimize the like nitpick, uh, the cherry picking or like put your bias in the searching process. So I think in that, pay, that way it's beneficial. And then other accessory function, like you can just get wrap info and then put wrap model and then index you want to check. And then it got give me, give the uh, information on the wrap itself, or you can do the study info and then put wrap model and then put whatever study name study you want to check and then it shows that what is the title of the study and then the number of sample in the study and then the revs that's like where those top revs are contributed contributed so it's kind of, uh where uh yeah contributing and so i want to reproduce the some of the figures in the slide so slide 17 was the TCGA data set analysis for quick uh, database search. And I will reproduce that here. And the one thing I just will note quickly is here, I put this file, data file in the Google Cloud bucket again, because just like to make this a uh, vignette, a self stand. But the thing, uh, the one thing is I use the Endel package. I think it's Martin mentioned briefly, and I can't remember who else, but this time, but the uh, Endel package is helping. Uh, Endel package has a functionality that you can directly talk to the Google Cloud bucket. So in, in, uh, in the R session without using GS util in the terminal. So I use that to load the this data set and then this data set is just built from like TCG data set and then the code to build it is also uh, available in my use case pa uh, use pa case page. So lo I load this data set, which is a uh, list object. So, so it has like five different TCG data set. And then for now, I will just do the, try to reproduce panel B and then the validate. Again, I did the validate and just hit map. And then it gives the figure I showed you earlier. So rep 221 is the one of the highest uh, validation score. And then draw word cloud, rep model 221, and it gives you the word cloud and then find the studies in cluster rep model. Someone say something. Uh, it's really broken. I cannot understand. It was someone else. You can continue. Can you type and then I can read maybe?
Oh, okay. Do you, do I have a model of microarray data itself? No, I do not have a microarray data yet, but that's definitely one thing that can go quickly. And then, yeah, send the message that what kind of model you want. And I will, I'm, I want to make something that can be useful to other people. So yeah. Uh, thanks for the question. Uh, yeah. Our next one is a microarray <laughs> model. So, and so yeah, so, so back to the STEM part. So I can find the studies, relevant study. I can find the uh, uh, image pathways of this. So this, I just uh, reproduce my paper's figure too. <laughs> and so the next one is I want to show you is the uh, slide 18, which is the PCA plot with the enriched pathway in it. So again, I just make this data set available in the Google bucket. And then I use the GSUtilPipe GS, GS is the MVIL function. I use that to load that into my session. And uh, load data and then just just like name, just change the column to the, change, make the raw name. So So this is like 49 samples. And then this data set has like genes, row is gene in the gene symbol. And then the column is the samples. And then again, I will do validation for 40, oh. Uh, okay, I'm not sure what this is, but I think it's letting me do <laughs> proceed. So I'll just ignore for now. Uh, so annotate, uh, annotate PC2 and then annotate PC123. So that's it. And then for the example, I had the, uh, I color coded, colored the cell type and which is just one of the available metadata for this data set. And I decide to, I will add that. I mean, you can actually uh, have plot without it, which will show it's not required input. So you will just have this. But if you put, if you have the uh, cell type annotation, you can just add that to here. And then here, PC2 is monocyte and then PC3 seem like some kind of translation, ribosome translation and so on. So PC2 seems more straightforward, but monocyte, so that's separating. But yeah, like there, it, it, this is like our tool is not designed for a hypo, hypothesis testing, but definitely hypothesis, hypothesis building and then EDA tool. So this can, I think this, we, our tool put you in a better spot to do the, for the following, following this uh, study. And yeah, I think this is all the example I have for today and hope you enjoy and any question I will take. Thank you, Shiyun. Let's see if we have questions from my audience. Yeah, microarray user data can be uh, used. Yeah, micro uh, microarray data can be used as input data. Yeah, actually, that one of the the uh, colon cancer subtyping that was uh, microarray data. The test data set was microarray data. So yes. I actually have one. <clears throat> so, oftentimes uh, when you work with uh, data from uh, multiple donors, uh, the most variation comes from the inter individual variation between your donors. And this can dominate the first few principal components in your data while your uh, experimental factor or your yeah, factor of interest can be quite suppressed. And can your um, uh, method deal with this situation? Can it filter out those high variation that is not so interesting for you and just focus on the variation of interest? 
so you're let me make sure I understand. So you're talking about something like individual differences, like wouldn't that noise will interfere or not? Like, can I remove that kind of noise from our analysis? But yeah, I, mean, I, I wouldn't call it noise, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, I think so. I think I, for that kind of case, I will say that something like so. So your sample is like a different patient, like diff, same disease patient with same disease. But so I like okay. I yeah, let's, let's say you you have a data set with well, ten ten uh, donors, uh, five diseased and five healthy. But mm -hmm. your, your uh, main variation, main source of variation is the inter-individual differences and not the disease. So let's say the disease variation is like PC5 or PC10 in your component. Uh, I have, that you, I should test that. I haven't tested that kind of samples, but my expectation is, I think once you do that, you will have like RABs that's like rank top ranked but it's kind of scored differently so like something that's like more common and then like common like i will say that's something like you will have a signature that's for like even though it's weaker something like pay, disease per individual versus handi healthy individual healthy individual the signature for those two different group and then potentially like individual specific revs will show up for the individual data sets but i think both will appear, but how they were ranked in your research can vary depending on how strong the individual differences versus the actual like common disease related features, so on. So I think both will, I think in some sense, I think those signals will be uh, dissected from, like, separated using our method <laughs> by pulling, by validating, pulling different reps. So that's what I expect. Fact, but yeah, I haven't. Okay, thank you. More online questions. Uh, Can I ask a question? There was one. <coughs> um, oh, so sorry. Um, just wondering, I'm just coming up to this so you can hear me. Um, just wondering, quick question on the annotation of the RAB. So you've mm -hmm. done the PCAs on all the different data sets, and then mm -hmm. you have to annotate the RABs, and you're doing it by pre-ranked GSEA or by mesh terms. Um, was there much value from the mesh terms, or was it primarily from the GSEA? Like when you were actually looking at those terms, where did the where, what were the terms that were most use most useful? So you are asking, what will when will I use mesh terms over GSP? No, no, no. So, so so each principal component, you're clustering mm -hmm. the principal components based on person correlation, from what I understand. But let me know if I'm gotten this wrong, and then you're annotating those components or the centroid of those components based on a gene set enrichment analysis on a mesh terms? Mm -hmm. No? Uh, no, mesh term annotation and gene set enrichment is completely separate module of annotation. Oh, so you either annotate with one or the other, but not both, is it? No, they are annotated. Given RAV is annotated by both mesh term and then the uh, gene set enrichment analysis. Yeah, one single rev is annotated by both of them, two. Okay. And the one question. Yes, so, so I, some, from the stuff we've, we've done in the past, I found that the mesh terms were very crude and often mm -hmm. didn't add actually any additional, they added very little value. So I'm just wondering yeah. whether because your approach was quite different to some of what we've done, I was just wondering whether you were able to get value from the mesh terms, or whether they were so they did whether they, they added value or not. That's literally what I'm just wondering is whether the, the mesh terms uh, were useful. Yeah. So for me, uh, 
because I did a bunch of like waiting process. So in some sense, it's like the it's mesh. It is my mesh term collection is not just like single study, but like it's a collection of studies, and then like they are already already also weighted by like different studies contribution to the given rep. So I gave me better, quicker, better, little crude than Jin says, but quicker and then better glimpse of the rep, what those specific rep is representing. So in that sense, I will use that uh, uh, mesh term more for like at the beginning, like search for the uh, your rep of in your interest. So it's that's what I will say, but yeah, I mean, I don't know. Okay, well, cool. Okay. I'm glad you, glad you got more use out of it than we did by the sounds of it. <laughs> yeah, just like, yeah. All right, we are out of time. Thank you, Shane, again. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Thank <laughs> you.